So then we can search for material. Uh, this is another really nice uh, thing you can do in Skid. Um, so for example, I want to look at games where lights up queen. So just do plus one, search, um, and it's going to look for all the games where white is up a full queen. Um, and so, you know, we'll just go to the filter, and there are none. Uh, looks like uh, um, weaker players. Uh, I haven't given them enough credit. So I suppose, okay then, why not games where white up a queen for a rook? Um, giving black a bit more credit now. Um, And it should uh, modify the filter. It hasn't done that to mine um, as it normally would. And you can also search for patterns, common patterns. White has an isolated queen's pawn, isolated queen pawn d4, d5 break versus e6. So some really um, cool features here, uh, and it's a really powerful program, um, and certainly more than you'd expect from. That's why this is the wrong tree. And you wonder I wasn't getting games like that. So yeah, let's just go um, material search again. So let's just look for a game where white's up a queen for nothing. Um, you know, so it takes a couple of seconds. Um, and it finds all the games where uh, white is up a queen. Um, so, you know, um... Uh, not sure how to find this, but uh, I suppose we're in game one. Um, you know, that, that's the filter. So, uh, to, uh, if you'd like, just look for games specifically in the filter. Um, can't quite remember how to restrict the filter, actually. Um, <laughs> which is rather pathetic, to be honest. Uh, but once you have that, um, and you'll be able to see all the games just where white's up a queen and that's a really cool feature uh, once you get to learn how to use it so then you can search by header like just basic PGN stuff like Ardrian's M, Deckage J kind of stuff and reset the filter so all games are included so you know I screwed up the filter there to make it much more restrictive and now I've got it back to all so we can load the next filtered game um, so if we just do another search, um, like I said, I'm really learning from you, with you guys. Uh, yeah, let's make you zero as well. But instead of just being materialistic, uh, let's instead look for a rook sacrifice on c3. That should be an interesting search. So it's going to take a bit longer because this is a, um, it's a more, uh, in-depth search, but you know, it can even search for themes, which is a really cool thing. Um, so you know, like it loads to filter, and here we find this game between Jacob Airguard, <laughs> ironically, um, where he's, where, um, Black is going to play a sacrifice on C3, um, in exchange for like these crippled pawns, oh dear, sorry about that. Um, which obviously black targeted with moves like queen a5, um, d5 was the next move played. And you know, like, you can go through these games with certain strategic themes that you want to go over, and that's a really, really nice feature in Skid. It really helps you with uh, your analysis of games. Um, so, you know, like game 39, we've already gotten a rook sacrifice on c3. Um, but yeah, that's demonstrating some of the power. You can do like bookmarks, um, you know, so you can bookmark a position and come back to it whenever you want. There's file finder, you know, like books, databases, HTML, sounds, and these are just buttons for opening a new database and creating a new database. So now that we've you know, just done an overview of these buttons, I'd just like to show some of the tools you can use. Like These are the analysis engines, we've been through them before. And these are just like shortcuts. So start engine one, you can open up the first engine um, instantaneously. A cross table, remember this, you know, shows the tournament and the rating performance of each player, which is a really cool feature. Um, 
Then there's the email manager, so you can just add emails. Um, so now you'll be able to play correspondence, chess, and skid, um, which is another really nice feature. I'll oh, just go through this game. Eventually, it's given drawn. So yeah, an interesting game there. Um, pardon me. Uh, tools. Um, yeah, another thing that's really cool. Um, suppose, let's suppose I want to look at the dragon variation. So instead of e6 here, oh, it's gonna go try variation. Uh, tools opening report. Um, so what it does is it makes an opening report. <laughs> this is really cool. I mean, it shows what database it's from, it gives the moves you get to it, the eco. Um, it shows the statistics, um, the oldest games, the newest games that you can look at. So if you want to look at the evolution of the theory, um, you can see its evolution of its popularity. So um, we can see it's uh, sort of peaked in the 90s, possibly before, uh, before Castle's Queenside was discovered. Um, it shows its frequency, frequency in the last 10 years, frequency in the last 5 years. Um, it shows um, players who played it a lot as white, so you can look at their games um, and see how they responded to it. Um, and it shows players who played it a lot as black. So if you want to learn this opening with black, um, you can see who played it with black and you can analyze their games. Um, it shows the ratings. Uh, so white's average rating and white's average performance. So we can see that white usually does a bit better than black. Um, it shows the highest rated games. So this is what one between Anand and Carlson, a very strong one there. Um, got some more statistics here. The shortest wins, moves and themes. This is a really cool one. Um, so it shows like the moves to get here. Yeah, it shows the next, the most popular moves from here. Um, positional themes, uh, we can see the opposite card castling is a very popular one. Um, Queen's exchanged in 40% of the games, only one side has the bishop pair, that's probably black in a main line, um, with uh, knight a5 coming to c4, um, forking a bishop and queen on d2, and so the white bishop on b3 ends up taking Apologies for that arrow being the wrong way. Yes, now we've got a double-sided arrow. <laughs> and, you know, we've got the theory table. There's an absolute ton of information we can get, um, almost in the, the click of a fingertip, and that is one of my favourite features in Skid. Um, you know, we've also got, like, the relative filter graph and the um, absent, I think it is, filter graph. Book tuning, so if you have a book, you can use this to just, like edit the book so that you can refine it to the moves you play. Really cool. Connect hardware. Um, you can add an internet or you can just like configure this. Um, player information, player report. Um, so say for example, um, let's just say that I'm playing Kasparov tomorrow. Um, okay, that wasn't the best of moves, but of ideas because I didn't click on any particular player. But, um, you know, you can see his statistics, his oldest games, his newest games, his most frequent opponents, um, openings he plays, result lengths, ratings and performances against different openings, uh, average ratings and performance, games with the highest average ratings, so like when he was at his best, moves, openings, positional themes, like does he like to have same side castling, does he like an open CD or e-file, um, does he like uh, very strong passed pawns, only one side having the bishop pair, you can see his end games. Um, you know, any bishop and knight end games, any rook end games, any rook bishop knight end games. Um, you know, really cool. Um, if you're going to be playing someone and you want to know what they do, and you know, of course, they'll need to be in this database, the database you're using first. But again, that's just a phenomenal feature. Um, you know, like see, so we can look up play information for Jacob Airguard. Um, we can like get a report on him. Really nice. Uh, you know, rating graph, score graph export current games um, so yeah you can even like save it into a sharp uh, save a current game into a sharp looking um, HTML file that is a web page um, so this is good if you maintain a website of course you can also export a particular game to the PGN export all filter games so you know um, the current filter you could say 
is um the dragon variation and you know if you want to look at the dragon variation export this to a PG ga PGN game you can also import files uh, you can capture the current board um, here we've got some extra features we can play on fix and these are just uh, it's stuff we've looked at before but these are other ways to open it and it also has the keyboard shortcuts here so suppose um, I'm sick of doing that um, so I look at the control the, the, um, the keyboard shortcut and it's control E um, suppose I just don't like all these arrows I've created here. I just delete them all and then click store. And there we go, it's much cleaner. And just to get rid of it, control E. Simple. Um, search, you know, we can reset the filter. We can search for the current board. Game, you know, we can load some more games. We can identify the opening. We can find the novelty in the game. We can add variations. We can strip, undo. Yeah, you know, just an incredible lube of amazing stuff that can be done with Skid, and I've really just touched the surface today because this is just a phenomenal program, and um, if you use this one properly, you really should be able to benefit from it. So anyway, uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you uh, got something out of it with using Skid. And anyway, um, I hope to see you next time in my in the beginning of my tutorial videos, just technologically, um, where I'll probably move on to either the Chess Tempo website or for Bass Chess for playing on the free internet chess server. So anyway, see you then.